Adam here again, and this time I've got some other stuff to review. Uh, since my last video on a random Chinese cooler called the Vet Ru cooler um, got so good and, and actually had some views on it, I figured, hey, you know what? Um, I run a computer shop, so let's review those products and see what else out there is pretty good. So today, I will be reviewing... The uh, Vet Roo, uh Lurker V240, uh, which is a really uh, good missed opportunity for gamers to call this the V420, but hey, that's what we're reviewing today. We're reviewing this guy and the... Uh, Vet Brew Mesh 6 Gaming ATX Case. So, today's actually going to be two products for one video. So, uh, let's get into that review. And one other thing before I forget, I will be comparing these numbers today for the Lurker 240. Yeah, the Lurker B240. I'll be comparing this to the performance of a Noxua, uh, Noxua NHD15 and see how well this cheaper Chinese liquid cooler is going to do versus one of the best air coolers on the market. So this will be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Enjoy the review while uh, we got some interesting results to look at. All right. So I don't know if you can hear the machine next to me running. Um, you can kind of get the front. So, yeah, this guy is running. What's really nice about it is that it does have this entire mesh front. So I guess this part of the review is for the case, right? So, uh, it has four front fans. It's got two rear fans uh, and an all-mesh front. So this thing moves air. Now, the downside is it is loud because the more fans you have the more that moves the louder it is so that's already a weird thing another weird thing about the case is that it's short um weirdly short so we have a full atx board installed in this guy and typically the cutouts where the power cord comes through um isn't where the SSDs are, but because we have a full ATX board in this case, and this is an ATX case, it doesn't reach. And I don't know why. Which is a weird thing, that weird choice in design. It's also tall. So, the case of how tall it is, in fact, I, it's a hard, hard to get it in frame. So I'm actually going to shut the machine down and be right back. All right, so now that I've got it unhooked, we can see how tall it is. This thing is giant. With four fans in the front, that makes this thing really tall. Oddly tall. Weirdly tall. And if we spin it around here, you can see, if I put it on its side, that it's got two fans on the backside because of how tall it is. Typically in a case, we only see one of these. Very weird, weirdly tall, weirdly tall. It's just so odd. It doesn't look bad. It's just weirdly tall. The other thing I wanted to bring up while I had it here is, I mean, it has temper glass side. That's pretty good. Uh, the K, the, um, it has a good power supply shroud, which is also pretty good. Um, it has a weird cutout thing on the back, which, again, you can uh, kind of see here. Uh, and it has a filter on it, a removable filter, which is nice. The top has a removable filter. It also has got a few USB ports up there. A dedicated controller for your RGB, which is nice because on this board, it's an Asus motherboard with a 4-pin and the entire case uses ARGB. And because it uses ARGB, 
with a motherboard that is Asus, that is the normal four pin, not the three pin. No why not doesn't work. So the built-in case controller is really nice. So now we'll get on to the cooler review portion. When we did our testing, it was actually not with the processor that's in this machine. We have a Ryzen processor in this machine. We actually tested it with an older, hotter processor. We tested it with the FX 9590. This is a 220 watt processor. So if that thing is gonna make heat, boy, does it make heat. Like if there's any processor out there we really wanna test with how much cooling load it can really get out there, the FX 9590 is a great, great processor to do that test with. With the all-in-one cooler, so this guy, the uh, V20 Lurker, after about 10 minutes, um, our start-off temperature was 36C, our maximum temperature was 49C, our average temperature was 48C, pretty good, right? But I think we paid $80 for it, which is not too bad at all for a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, yeah, 80 bucks, pretty good. So now I will compare that ugh, to our Noctua here. Now, our Noctua had a minimum temperature of 37C, which again, that's just when we started the test, a maximum temperature of 49C and an average temperature of 47C. So. The air cooler actually did a little bit better, and that is to be expected. This is a $100 air cooler. It's one of the best ones on the market, and you don't need to worry about pump failure or anything else like that. But, you know, it's it's pretty good. Um, this guy is great. It's Noxua. Noxua is a great brand. But, yeah, so, actually, as far as the average temperature is concerned, the air cooler did run one degree cooler. But it doesn't have all the RGB. It doesn't look near as fancy and this guy looks just way better. So for one degree Celsius, that's a pretty good trade-off when it comes to the aesthetics. So here's a few things uh, about the case while working in it that I wanted to go over. Uh, yeah, really tall, <laughs> obviously. Uh, lots of fans from the factory. It comes with one, two, three, four, five, six fans from the factory. That is a ton of fans. Um, the power supply shroud area, while it is nice that it is there, it is kind of small. If you have like a thousand watt power supply from EVGA, it's not gonna fit so well. Um, or it's gonna be really cramped and really tight. So that's definitely something you wanna keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, the cutouts. The cutouts are bad, they're in the wrong place. Because the case is so short, a standard ATX board, you're gonna be running cables through places where they're typically not supposed to come through. Uh, actually has really nice feet. No break off feet gonna happen here. Not really a problem, but you know, it is something to, to keep it note. Uh, working in a computer shop, feet get broken off all the time. Sometimes they're a little rubber, you know, glued on things. Yeah, so definitely a thing that we find to be really nice. Um, and it has the integrated uh, ARGB controller, which is really nice because the cooler, as you've seen in some of the B-roll, it, it syncs up really nice and it, 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 everything works how it's supposed to. The fact that everything works how it's supposed to, out of the box, fantastic. Um, so overall, would I recommend this case? Uh, it looks really good. With us paying $90 for the unit, it it's hard to justify that this is a $90 case. Um, yeah, I... It, if it, this is not something I would recommend to my customers just because of it's tall, it's short. Um, yeah, it's just, it's hard to work in with your standardized components. When it comes to like a full size graphics card, it's gonna fit, but you know, that's, that's it. It's got two trays in the bottom for regular hard drives. It's got three or four spots in the front with four, you know, four SSDs. Most of my customers nowadays, they're gonna be running M.2s and maybe a, a two terabyte storage drive. And that's not even really necessary with the decrease in price on flash memory. So yeah, the case is not something I can recommend. Now, the cooler, that's a different story. 240 millimeter RGB, ARGB, the pump sinks, the fan sinks, everything sinks, looks really good, provides pretty good cooling, um, 240 millimeter, 
radiator, it's good. Like, it, honestly, I will say it's good. At the $80 price tag, maybe if you can get it on sale at $70, $72, $75, definitely pick it up. $80 to $90, eh, maybe you want to look at some of the other big guys. But it's still a good value if you can get it there. Um, yeah, so that's that's really all that I've got for this review, reviewing both the uh, Lurker V20 cooler and obviously the Mesh... Mesh 6 uh, ATX gaming case. So that is all. Adam, uh, again, signing off. I hope you enjoyed this review of these uh, weird Chinese products. Uh, Vetru, uh, you have yourself a good day. Bye.